amino acid methionine makes methyl movement possible. And it's able to do this thanks to the sulfur it has, the thio part of methionine, attached to a methyl group. And this methyl group can then get transferred onto other molecules to do things like control the accessibility of regions of DNA. A methyl group might seem really boring, it's just like a carbon with some hydrogens, but it can have really important functional consequences in those modifications as well as in roles in anabolism, so actually building molecules. We need to activate the methionine in order to transfer the methyl. And so if we think about methionine, we have carbon, carbon, sulfur, carbon. Methionine and cysteine, those are the two amino acids of the sulfur, but with cysteine you have one shorter carbon at the top and then you don't have that carbon at the bottom. And so you just have the sulfur, the thiol at the bottom, but with methionine you've got that methyl group and that methyl group is what we want to move, but the sulfur is pretty happy with it right now. So we need to make the sulfur less happy with it so that if we remove it, the sulfur will still be happy. The way that we're going to do this is this really cool reaction where what actually happens is that the methionine, the sulfur of that methionine, is actually going to attack kind of the condition connection point of an ATP molecule to the phosphate groups. And so typically we see ATP being used to like transfer phosphate groups, but here we're actually attaching the adenosine part onto the methionine through the sulfur. That gives that sulfur a positive charge, which can be relieved if you pop off the methyl group. So you get this molecule of s methionine or SAM. What we want to do now is we want to actually transfer that methyl group off and onto another molecule. The way that we're gonna do this is with additional enzymes called methyltransferases. And those methyltransferases are gonna come in and they're going to take that methyl group and they're going to transfer it onto another molecule, such as onto a lysine of a histone protein that DNA is wrapped around, and that's going to help kind of silence that region of the DNA so that gene doesn't get used. And now you're left with this molecule, s adenosyl homocysteine, or SAH. So Sam I was, and now Sat I am. But don't be sad, we can go and we can take that homocysteine and we can actually convert it back into methionine by adding a methyl group back from a folate molecule and that is then going to allow us to have methionine again. And so we got this kind of circle of life where we're taking that methyl group off, we're putting that methyl group on, but instead of just doing it directly we're actually doing it first by activating the methyl group for transfer by making the sulfur more vulnerable to attack by a nucleophile that then will take that methyl group and we're able to do this by hooking it up onto the adenosine part of an atp molecule rather than transferring a phosphate group from an atp molecule i just think that's a really cool reaction and methionine is making it all possible